financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flows. And then the financial statements are issued to users. Who are the users? Uh, if it's a publicly traded company, we're typically thinking about the end users being potential investors because they're the people that are investing in these things in terms of their uh, pension plans or something like that, stock trading. If they're getting money on a public exchange for investments into their publicly traded company, then we're typically thinking about the end user being the investors. Now note, we might be doing an audit for some other reason. The end user may be, say, the bank who required an audit so that they can trust the financial statements and see if they want to do business with a particular company. That might, well, that's another common scenario for smaller types of companies. That could be a more common type of scenario. Publicly traded companies required audit. We're usually thinking about investors, smaller companies, might have specific need for a full audit and therefore we're thinking the the end user might be something more likely a, a bank or something like that all right well what does the audit do now when you think about the audit coming into play you're thinking about this having already happened management has done these things the time period has passed or is close to passing when we start to think about what the audit engagement will be doing in other words when we start to plan the audit engagement the financial statements in essence we think of as we could think of at this point being created at this point and now the auditor of course is going to be looking into the accuracy of those financial statements have they been put together in accordance with a set of rules that's what the audit is designed to do those set of rules we can imagine oftentimes being generally accepted accounting principles in a u.s audit so they're going to obtain evidence we're going to obtain evidence and and that's how we're going to determine this and, and again remember the end goal is are these financial statements represented correctly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles? Our goal is not to say, are these financial statements, I mean, is this company doing well or not, or something like that. We wanna see if they're a going concern, are they gonna go out of business because, and that's because that's gonna violate some of the assumptions that we typically make. But other than that, we're not making those type of value judgments. What we're trying to do is say, hey, this is what happened. Let's see what did happen. Are you reflecting what is happening in accordance with the set of rules that you're claiming to given the assertions that you've told us that you've put them together in accordance with typically being generally accepted accounting principles, then we're gonna go in and judge that based on evidence. We'll put together tests to see whether or not these items have been indeed put together in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, test management's assertions against uh, criteria, that being the generally accepted accounting principles oftentimes uh, determines overall fairness of financial statements. We're gonna make a determination, that's our point is that you know what's the what's the determination after we've gotten the evidence once we make that determination we're going to issue audit reports to uh, our company financial statements so we're actually going to then of course issue our opinion uh, on the financial statement so obviously we're going to have terms of engagement between the management and the auditor uh, at the get-go so when we think about the process of course we're going to have some kind of planning of the process the person that hires the auditor, which, and this is going to be a problem in some ways, because you would think that there would be an independence type of problem happening here, is going to be the company. The company, for some reason, needs an audit to judge the fairness of the work that they did, and they're paying the auditor. So note there's kind of an issue there with regards to the person that's getting paid to do the job to judge the person who's paying them is a bit of a problem. That's going to be one of the reasons we focus in on things like independence uh, at a later time. So once, so first we're going to have this engagement. Management needs an audit. Why? Possibly they're a publicly traded company and they have to have an audit. And so the company actually has to pay for an audit because they're publicly traded. But they might need an audit because they're a bank or something like that. And then they, they need to get an audit because the bank wants an audit. So they need to hire an auditor. The bank doesn't hire the auditor. The management hires the auditor, the company hires the auditor to audit, but the auditors being independent in nature, CPA firms regulated, then uh, they have more assurance or uh, reliability in the eyes of the bank and the eyes of investors. So we have to have that engagement agreement of terms. What are the